I have been asked over and over and over and over again for a video of the Heartland Cyclone 4006. And we're finally here going to do a full tour and review of this Heartland Cyclone. Let's go take a look. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Miles with Firmly Unbound, and if you are a returning viewer, hopefully you're one of the people that has been asking me over and over and over again for a review of this Heartland Cyclone 4006. I don't think there is a single model of any style of RV that I have been requested to make a video of more than this here, so I'm really excited to finally get a video of this product here for you. Now, before we go into this, I do have to tell you I am probably the most conflicted as I have ever been on any RV with the amount of likes to dislikes that I have in the RV. It's literally like it bounces back and forth. And I'm going to just give you my honest opinion on some things as we go through this RV. And then I'll leave some things up to you to obviously just share your opinion as well. And I really want to know your thoughts. So be ready to share your thoughts down below in the comments as well. Now, as we go through the outside real quick, this model here has a full body paint scheme on it. So this has the full body paint on it. It looks really nice. It is a much more bold color scheme than you're gonna see from a lot of other toy haulers out there. And real quick, I'm gonna take you over here to just show you what a standard Cyclone is gonna look like. You can see it's gray with this blue, almost kind of neon effect on your graphics out here. And this is something that is definitely going to take a certain taste to appreciate. Um, a lot of y'all may have seen the family trying something new they have a heartland cyclone that they got and they actually got a pink color on it which is really freaking cool it's just not going to be for everybody you know what i mean so that is something to keep in mind it's definitely a very bright color here with this blue that it comes with so if it's for you that's awesome and it also may not be for you so that's the first thing you can let me know what you think about the color scheme on here now as we go from the front to the back, I'm really curious. This has one of the most straight up and down front caps I have seen on a toy hauler RV. And it just seems like it would be so unaerodynamic. Like it would just be a huge wall for wind to hit as you're going up and down the road. It's just like, a, it looks like a brick up here. So that's one of the most interesting things to me is just how it's not perfectly straight up and down, but man, it is so dang close. So interesting on the front cap there, how vertical it is. And then it's a molded fiberglass one piece front cap. You have the Rotaflex pin box here from Kurt, which is a Lippert brand, has a rubber bushing in here. So that's going to have shock absorption as you brake and accelerate. It's going to have some shock absorption there in that compartment. Nice open storage space. So, like what they did here, you can see how this is open to your storage door here and storage door back here as well. And you'll have that space into there. That's a nice big open space. And then it does have you know, like a toy hauler garage flooring material in there as well. And motion activated light there as I stuck my arm inside. Come down underneath here, you have an Onan 5500 watt generator. You have a Lipper auto leveling system here. And then through here, you're going to have your battery compartment with all of your battery equipment in here. And it has a 2000 watt inverter. Make sure that's right. Yeah, 2000 watt inverter. And then keep coming this way. Has a drop frame up front. This is definitely a full profile fifth wheel. So that means this frame piece down here, it is dropped down and that's gonna give you, you know, that bigger storage space through that area there. Two JBL speakers outside. So you'll have those JBL speakers. You can see it's a nice glossy finish to the paint as well. Can see your reflection in there. And 30 pound propane bottle through here. Now, as we come underneath here, this is something that's really interesting. You have a TV that pivots out. So if you've never seen this before, this is how this kind of works. It's going to be on a sliding tray where you slide this out. You can do this on just about any fifth wheel, but this actually has it standard. This seems like the strut should go up higher because you see how this door, it just kind of sits there weird. It's like, it's not opening up all the way. I would hope it goes a little bit higher than that because it's going to be really awkward how that TV slides out of there if it just stays like that. Um, but the other thing I was looking at, uh, have really nice looking finishing here. Aluminum framing looks like it will have welds on both sides of the frame. That's nice, thick aluminum framing there as well. And it's all 
you know, really nicely finished out and looks really clean underneath here. You also have slide room controls from right here. So you actually can control your slide out from this switch in here, which I think is really necessary. And I like the ability to be able to do that. And you have a little bit of space down through here as well with a spot here to run. Um, if you want to run like an extension cord or something through there, you're able to do that. In here, you're going to have another cool feature really like this. This is going to be, hopefully I can get this out with one hand. Yeah, a absolutely huge um, grill and griddle cooktop that you have. And this is all, well, this part right here is gonna be underneath your awning. So you can see your awning there. And actually, you know what? Let me open up the camera, get to this wide angle there. So you can see that is underneath the awning. You have your grill here, griddle cooktop, and this is just a massive cooking surface with that. Now, one of the most interesting things with Cyclone that you're just not gonna see from anybody else is they are doing an entry door in the slide out. This gives them the ability and the versatility to offer floor plans that you will just not find anywhere else. And that is a huge appeal to the Heartland Cyclone. Here at the Hershey RV Show, I can't guarantee you'll find this price anywhere else outside of this show, especially with full body paint. But you can see they have it priced here at $119,995. The MSRP was $186 with the full body paint. It's 45 feet, four inches long and dry weight is 16,460 pounds. So I would absolutely recommend a one ton dually to tow something like this. Open this up and you have storage space up here. Same thing again. It's like, I don't know what's going on with these storage doors. Why they, it's like they're not extending up all the way. See how it's like not going flat. It just feels awkward. Like I have to duck under this to get under there. And that's, I don't know why that is, but you have storage space there and Again, can see the floor plan layout here and a little mini refrigerator. As we come back this way, you're, this is a triple axle toy hauler, of course, and you're going to have, this is a Saloon tire. It's a 235-80 R16 tire, and you do have a Moride CRE 3000 suspension system. Down underneath here, you have a fully enclosed underbelly. All your water tanks and water lines will sit above that enclosed underbelly down underneath there and you have a six point hydraulic auto leveling system. Keep coming to the back. You have another awning over this door as well. That front awning is gonna extend over that slide out there. And then you have your patio off the back. It has a rear entry step here and you have your awning that will come off the back of this patio as well. And as we keep going around, oh, there's another compartment here. I don't have a key to open it, but this looks like it's gonna be a storage space down underneath here that would go pretty far back. I wish I had a key to open this up and confirm what this is, but I don't with me right now. That's such a bummer. Um, if you know for sure what this space is down here, let me know down below in the comments, but that looks like it's just gonna be storage access to a big compartment down underneath here, I would think. Hopefully that's correct, but it looks like that's the case. As we keep coming back around this way, you have your um, patio that goes around the, or your um, gate that goes around the patio here. And then one thing about the Cyclone that I just, I, I like in some other things better is the way that you open up your patio. It does have the latches here. Now what this means is, unless I missed something, which I don't think I did. Yeah, I don't think so. You're gonna have to come outside of your RV to open up this patio here. So that's the only way you can open it. You can't open it from inside the garage like you can in some other toy haulers where you might have a pull strap right there inside the RV to undo the latch that would be right here instead of latches on the sides there. So that's gonna require you be outside of your RV to ever put your patio down, which, you know, I just think it's easier and more convenient if you have the pull strap to open that up. Um, also, it's not gonna have support legs down underneath here. Um, so you're gonna be dependent on your cables there to hold this in the patio position. In the patio position, it'll hold 1,500 pounds, and then in the ramp position, it'll be rated to support 3,000 pounds. Ladder to get up onto the roof here, and then over on this side, you're going to have a power cord reel. Love that. That is definitely a very nice convenience to have, having the electric power cord reel for your 50 amp power cord. Biggest reason on that is those power cords are freaking heavy. They really are heavy, so that's going to make your life a whole lot easier not having to wrap that thing up yourself with your bare hands. Down through here, I really hope this is open. Of course it is not. Should have a 60 gallon fuel capacity on here though. 30 for your generator, 30 for your toys. Yep, and I can tell from that that you do. You have through here probably a pull valve for a dump station. Yep, gonna have that there. So you're gonna have black and gray tank that will dump right here. 
and water heater there. So that looks like not a tankless water heater on here. That looks like a standard water heater that you're going to have. And then cable driven slide mechanism here on your slide outs for the big slide there, which we see on quite a few toy haulers. And then you have a cable driven slide on your smaller slide here as well. Coming up this way, you have access to your water management system. This is the Nautilus water management system there. So nice and easy to use. And then down underneath here, there's a dump station that we talked about already. I don't think I missed anything. Let me make sure there's not two dump stations back here. No, everything comes to that one central spot there in the middle. So like that and definitely approve of that. Hopefully I don't get kicked out of here. I hear them closing things up and shutting doors and whatnot. So hopefully they let me finish up what I'm doing here and it looks like we're in the clear so all right now we are going to go inside and i'm so excited to take a look at this thing it really is a incredibly impressive floor plan i mean there is a lot to talk about with these cyclones in the floor plan here inside so as we come inside here be ready to let me know what you think down below in the comments it does have an asdell sidewall so really like to see that that is a composite panel sidewall means no wood in the sidewall so if you get moisture in that sidewall by any chance you're not going to have to worry about delamination happening or moisture damage happening and this is definitely going to be something that will be rated for four seasons as well you have your more ride safety rail here so this extends down to the bottom of the step you have your solid surface step here and this is not a weight assisted step surprisingly but it makes sense because this is in the slide so you will have to support the full weight of this step every time you move it in and out and as we go inside here this floor plan man oh my goodness i mean it is stinking impressive it just really is i mean two recliners here and really six recliners in total and no armrests in between the recliners so it makes them basically like two cushion sofas that double as recliners and just a such a so impressive looking living room setup that you have in here really nice looking lighting as well what they do with the led lights up above here led lights in the slide out as well on both sides of the slide led lights up in the light fixtures here in the slide out and of course because you have your entry door in the slide it just gives this floor plan a feel that you are not going to find anywhere else and it is really really impressive also really like that you have these like residential style curtains on the windows this is so cool too this definitely is just different and i really like that on this window here on your side window this has a pull down blackout shade and just the pull down blackout shade no day shade on that these recliners here these are going to have heat and massage on them and they also have a light looks like the light's not wanting to come on there on this one but you can see it on that one right there and then i'm curious they have a pull strap on the recliner let's see if they actually lay back oh it looks like they have yep absolutely do so your recliners here gonna lay back i will test this real quick on the ones directly across from the tv as well let me know what you think about this living room arrangement and this kitchen arrangement and just this area in general the space in general let me know what you think pull this out this looks like it should yep it's gonna lay flat as well so definitely can lay flat directly there across from your tv so all these will lay flat it's so cool being able to have six recliners here in this space and certainly going to be one of the most efficient and just practical living room setups you'll see in a fifth wheel toy hauler your slide out boxes go almost all the way to the top of the ceiling so that gives that a very big feel in here you have a nice big looks to be about a 55 inch screen tv probably that looks bigger than a 50 inch i could be wrong i, I really struggle with tv sizes but looks like it's bigger than a 50 inch so maybe possibly a 55 or a 60. you have storage up above your tv this is a glass panel cabinet door shallow storage up there and a battery disconnect switch there you have store or not storage space sorry your controls here so you're going to have access to some of these controls and then you're going to have storage down through here electric fireplace will be an electric heat source for you jbl sound system and breakers and fuses down through there you do have floor vents in this fifth wheel rv so if that's a problem for you i understand however that is the most efficient heating system because it gives you a straight line of ducting through here they don't have to run essentially dryer hoses to feed your heat through the unit so that's going to be more of a residential style heating system um i don't think i'm trying to make sure i don't miss anything else you have a nice woven pvc style material here 
in the slide out. So this is like basically like an outdoor rug is the best way to think of it. And it's a nice flexible material there. Looks good. It's, you know, easy to clean, things like that. So I definitely like that. And I think that's everything in this space. I'm just really trying to make sure I'm not missing anything before we go back to the kitchen. Curious about these lights because it's just like a light bulb there and it seems like it would have some other fixture, but I think this is how it comes standard, which it doesn't look bad by any means. It just, I can also see part of me that feels like it looks a little incomplete, but nonetheless, a really nice um, kitchen space as well. We're going to get to some of this stuff in the kitchen real quick, go through the storage though. Nice big pantry space. You have the big Furion refrigerator. I mean, this thing is just absolutely huge there. Has this here to make sure it doesn't open up while you go down the road. This is such a wide refrigerator. It is massive and it looks really good in there too. It looks like a residential refrigerator, even though Furion, this is probably going to be a 12 volt refrigerator. Has an ice tray in it as well. And storage here. This is a tray that will slide back and then more storage underneath there as well. Storage space up above storage space up in this space. It's a little shallow because you do have a loft on the other side of this. And then here with your countertop space in the kitchen, you get a good amount of it. Toy haulers usually do not have great kitchen spaces, especially when you're trying to get so much room in the living room. But this I think is a really practical, usable space. You have a four burner stove here, gives you a good cooktop surface and you have a absolutely massive oven. I mean, that thing is huge. That oven is giant. So that is a really nice space. Storage here, that's a little shallow through here and then that goes back through there. Good spot to put maybe some baking sheets and things like that. Three pull out drawers. These are solid surface countertops and you have storage underneath the sink. That actually goes back down through there too. So important to know you have that whole lip there to feed storage through. You have your sink here with a very industrial looking faucet that will detach. And this is a single basin sink with the solid surface cover there as well. Open this and you got some nice storage. Storage up above your microwave. This is a residential size microwave that you're getting and it's a standard residential microwave. Again, really cool looking LED lights up above your woodwork there. You have a standard vent fan in this space and then storage all through here. That looks really nice. I really like the way this storage space looks. And I think it's cool how they did this lip right here as well. Curious what you think you might put in this space? Is it going to be more for decor or more practical items? Because obviously you're not putting like a coffee maker or something like this in here. So it seems like just mostly a place for decor, I would think. But let me know what your thoughts are on how you would use this space. You have nice big windows here. And again, just talking about the uniqueness of this. I mean, you have windows all the way around this area. You're going to be able to see your entire environment around you, which is just so cool. And I really love that. As we work our way back to the garage, this here has a couple different interesting things about the garage space. First of all, um, I don't want to like bash on this too heavily, but I'm really surprised in this price range of toy hauler, we are seeing a D ring like this that only has a 12,000 pound, you know, pull force on it. And I'm not sure what these are screwed and reinforced into, but gosh, it looks like it's just screwed into the floor. And I mean, I've seen D rings out there that have a 2,500 pound capacity on them. This is only 1200 pounds. And then there's also toy haulers in the same price range or less expensive that have, you know, welded to the frame tie downs that have a 5,000 pound pull capacity on them. So it's really one of the worst tie down systems I've seen in this price range of a fifth wheel and I would just hate to see something bad happen. Um, you know, I, I would hope that these aren't going to like pull out of the ground if you put a Harley back here or something, but anything on two wheels, especially just don't want to see it falling over or anything like that. So I hope that's not a risk and I hope that hasn't happened in something like this, but it just seems like a, a subpar tie down for this class of toy hauler. So that's one of the big critiques I have that just seemed a little strange to me. 
But other than that, let's work back from the patio and then kind of work our way forward. So out on the patio, you have your LED light here. You have your awning that comes out from that spot. We'll cover this patio. Prep to add a backup camera as well. You have tinted glass patio doors here and they do have the bug screen as well. So you can have, whether you want a breeze coming through, you have that ability, or if you want to keep the elements out, but keep the patio open and have that, you can get that. Happy Jack sofa system here. It does not have the um, flip down cup holders. And I've actually had some people say they really don't like that because that makes it a much less comfortable bed when you go to sleep on it. So when you flip these over, these come together, make a bed. Because there's no flip down cup holder, that's gonna give you a little bit more comfortable sleeping space there. You have a bed up over top as well. And I forgot the length of the garage on here, but it feels like about a 12 and a half foot garage. We saw it on the specs though, so if that's incorrect, I'll try to remember to put something on the screen to correct that. And then you have a loft back in the garage space. I really like this. I think, you know, if kids are using this loft for sleeping and whatnot, this is certainly a lot better than being in the living space so they can kind of be connected to the people that are here. Has a really cool looking kind of open window concept there as well. You have an AC here in the garage. It is ducted through here, audio system in here as well. You have storage up in here. No soft closed cabinets on any of the cabinet doors outlet here and then these are going to be a lot of light switches for the space and your bed up and down controls for the lift there you have a metal blind which again is a little interesting haven't seen that in any other toy hauler garages and fifth wheels in this price range i can think of but it's you know a standard metal style blind that you have here on the windows and then this is a modular style half bath. So you can see you have some hinges here. You can actually disconnect this here and this can swing open. So you can get a little bit more clearance space through this garage portion. And then this here, this door, yeah, it looks like that. It's just gonna go right there as you're going down the road. So that'd be the way to get your most space for this garage area. And then you would swing that back open to give you access to get to the half bath that you have in here. This is going to be a plastic toilet. It sits up a little bit elevated so you can sit more comfortably. And then you have a sink here as well. And then it's all just kind of open in here. There's no vent fan or anything in that space as the loft is over or directly over that bathroom. Have a TV there. That's nice how, you know, most toy haulers put it up high here. So you almost inevitably have to swivel it down. This one's gonna have a little bit lower or yeah, have it a little bit lower and everybody will be able to see it easily. Spot for a washer dryer combo here. Now you need a washer dryer combo because there's no way to vent out a washer and dryer. So washer dryer combo is what would be most practical in this space with it being in the middle if you did a washer dryer there. And then as we go back up to the front, you're gonna have your full bathroom and bedroom up front. It has a pass through bathroom and toy haulers just keep in mind, I mean, there's very few toy haulers out there that have great bathrooms. So this space is a little tight. It does have a good amount of countertop space. I've definitely seen some toy haulers that have way less countertop space than this. But the thing I'm really, really impressed with is you get a tub back here. So if you want to have a tub, this looks like it's nearly a foot deep. And that's going to give you a nice tub space there where you can, if you have kids or whatever, you can give them a bath and not something that's going to be very common. And then for when you're taking a shower, you do get the four shower head setup. And it is a good ceiling height in here. Ceiling height is about, when I stand on my tiptoes, I mean, my head hits the ceiling, but it's probably about six foot five or so here in the ceiling height. So when I step in the shower, it's pretty much perfectly at six foot two to right here. So my head does hit this if I stand up perfectly straight, step into the skylight and you're gonna have height for about six foot five six foot six possibly and this here sits really low so i mean the camera is at my eye level right here so i could tilt this up but it's i mean it's going to be spraying me in the body i would have to use the wand to get that up over my head and but i really like the the use of the like bath space you know so that's what i really think is most unique about that not something that's very common you have storage space above your sink with the two cabinets that open up there, outlets here, storage down underneath here, and storage space there. 
As we keep working our way back, you have a tilting king size bed. Love that. Love that you get a tilting king bed. It has a pretty nice mattress that it comes with as well. It's not terrible. And then storage space down underneath here. I don't know. It has a thick base underneath here, so I don't... Okay, you can get it up, but oh, that is tough with one hand. Okay, you can kind of see underneath there. You definitely have the storage, but oh, that was really hard with one hand. It is heavy. Pull down blackout shades on your windows on each side. You have storage space back through there, and that's outlets and USB ports back there as well. The extend and retract button here, and then your closet. You get some shelving space through here, clothing rod across here. I mean, you can see it's a flat wall there as well, so definitely making that flat or that front cap about as flat as they can. Have more shelving here, so if you want washer dryer, no washer dryer connections in the bedroom. That's going to be back in the garage. Get your TV here. It does have a really open space because of the way this bed tilts back. That really opens up your floor space when that bed is tilted. And then you have a window here. The curtain is currently, you know, closed up, but you open this up and you do have a window there. Plus it has the pull down blackout shade. So you get both. Going to have, it looks like there's maybe not. No, this definitely slides out. There you go. Has a latch that's holding it in place. So hidden storage down underneath there. That's a nice spot nobody's really going to know that's there. Most people won't even recognize it. I guess it's a little recognizable if you look underneath here, but a lot of people won't even know that you can get to that storage. Two pull-out drawers, two pull-out drawers on the side, and two more on the side there as well. And these have... Okay, they just click in place. It almost felt like it was snapping shut there. But that's everything here in the bedroom. Um, it does have a little bit of a noisy AC. I almost feel like I have to talk louder to talk over it but it's not you know the noisiest thing ever but it's certainly not the quietest either and that is everything on this heartland cyclone 4006 that i can think to talk about i mean i'm sure there may be another thing or two that i missed so if you have questions let me know down below in the comments and i'm sorry to just like i feel like i was picking it apart a little bit but it's just my honest thoughts and opinions like these are just things that i genuinely think and feel when i step inside of it and you know I don't want to influence your decision, but I feel like some of you value my opinion on things because I look at everything and I have the ability to see pretty much every product out there in the market. But I don't want to pick this apart completely because it is an absolutely killer floor plan. It is so stinking cool. Nobody else will ever have anything like this because nobody else is doing an entry door in the slide out. So it's just such a unique thing that Cyclone offers. And I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. So please let me know what you think about this fifth wheel toy hauler. If it's something that you like or you don't like, something you could see yourself camping in or living in, or if it's just an absolute no for you. So let me know down below in the comments if I missed something or you have questions, let me know down below in the comments. And that's all I got for y'all. So until next time, live firmly on balance.